Okay, everybody, if you like modern day westerns with lots of action and you're a Chuck Norris fan, this one's for you. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Review. I'm Rick, and this is the show where I talk about movies, TV shows, music, uh, especially a lot of the older stuff with that nostalgic feel kind of bringing you back. And I'm dipping into the uh, past for this one, especially if you're a Chuck Norris fan. I am doing Lone Wolf McQuaid. And as I said before the intro, this is a modern day Western, lots of action. It's just your good basic fun movie. Doesn't have to have a lot of plot, doesn't have to make a lot of sense. It's just one of those action vehicles that we've come to know and respect Chuck Norris for. And it also stars David Carradine, Leon Isaac Kennedy. And you're just gonna, if you haven't seen this movie, you should definitely check it out. Okay, now I'm not gonna lie. Lone Wolf McQuaid is kind of a guilty pleasure. It's one of those movies that if you see it on TV, you're gonna stop, you're gonna watch it. At least I know it's that way for me. Um, I do have it on DVD, and this movie came out in 1983. It's an American modern day Western, and it stars Chuck Norris, David Carradine, Barbara Carrera, L.Q. Jones, Leon Isaac Kennedy, and Robert Beltran. This film was distributed by Orion Pictures, and its actual release date was April 15th, 1983. It has a runtime of 108 minutes, and its initial budget was $5 million. And at the box office, it made somewhere between 12 and 15 million. Now, as far as the plot, J.J. McQuaid, who's played by Norris, is a former Marine and a current Texas Ranger who prefers to work alone and carries a large 44 Magnum revolver for a duty sidearm. He lives in an old rundown house in the middle of nowhere with a pet wolf. The film opens with McQuaid involved in an intense battle with Mexican bandits and a gang of horse thieves from which he emerges unscathed, saving several Texas state troopers. Once shaking off the dust, McQuaid returns to El Paso, Texas to attend a retirement ceremony for his fellow ranger and close friend, Dakota, who's played by Jones. After the party, his commander attempts to curb his lone wolf attitude by insisting that he work with local Texas State Trooper K.O. Ramos, who's played by Beltran. A lot of people may know him from Star Trek Voyager. He played Commander Chakotay. In this movie, he plays a tough but clean cut and polite Latino. One of the things I found to be uh, interesting about this movie Although he's divorced, McQuaid is on very good terms with his ex-wife and loves his teenage daughter, Sally. McQuaid also seems to like Sally's boyfriend, Bobby, who is enlisted in the U.S. Army and is respectful of McQuaid being a retired Marine. Now, while out horseback riding with his daughter, his daughter's horse runs wild and she's saved by Lola Richardson, who's played by Carrera. She invites them to a party where Raleigh Wilkes, played by Carradine, displays his prowess in martial arts and some of his thugs get into a fight with Ramos. After settling the fight, Richardson and McQuaid leave the party and apparently have a romantic encounter. She actually shows up at his house and cleans it. Yeah, she wants him. Despite McQuaid's annoyance that he does not need a woman to take care of him, Richardson seems to start breaking through his rough exterior and within a couple of days, they are together. Meanwhile, Sally and Bobby witness a hijacking of a U.S. Army convoy. Bobby is shot and killed by the hijackers, who then cause Sally to be hospitalized when they shove her car into a ravine. McQuaid more readily works with K.O. to find out who did this to his daughter and her boyfriend. K.O.'s computer skills allow him to track the errant convoy and at an illegal garment factory, they pick up a young delinquent named Snow, 
who is reluctant to talk until Dakota points a MAC-10 in the general direction of him and empties the magazine. In retaliation for disrupting his operations, Wilkes asphyxiates Dakota in his house and also has Snow killed. Dakota's murder attracts the attention of FBI Special Agent Jackson, who's played by Kennedy, who works with Ramos and McQuaid. The trail leads them to Wilkes, who reveals himself as an arms merchant who is hijacking U.S. arms shipments for his illicit weapons deals. The three eventually find the arms trading headquarters in the desert, and the climax begins. McQuaid is caught and sadistically beaten by Wilkes, who then orders that McQuaid be placed in his truck and buried under a truckload of dirt. After regaining consciousness in his truck, which is a 1983 Dodge Ram Charger, McQuaid produces a beer and pours it over his face. Then using his homemade supercharger system, he charges his truck through the dirt, miraculously breaking through and breaking himself free and then rescues Ramos and Jackson. All three men are weakened due to being shot and beaten. McQuaid finds that Sally has been taken by Wilkes to Mexico. A rival arms dealer known as Falcone, who has been disguising his illegal business as a pinball machine dealer, supplies McQuaid with this intelligence, claiming Wilkes has double-crossed him and he would like his competition eliminated. Falcone gives McQuaid the exact location in Mexico where Wilkes and his daughter are. Though McQuaid is intent and tries to head to the location on his own, both Ramos and Jackson have followed him and the three head to the base for their attack. After an intense battle in which Jackson is shot again, Sally and Richardson escape. Sally is shot in the leg and both women are sidelined. Finally, McQuaid and Wilkes engage a hand-to-hand -hand fight, with the fight leaning in Wilkes' favor until he strikes Sally, who had ran to her father's aid. This provokes McQuaid into a frenzy of hits and kicks that defeats Wilkes. McQuaid is reunited with his daughter, only to be fired upon by an injured Wilkes. Richardson steps in the line of fire to save him. She's fatally wounded, and her dying words to McQuaid are that Wilkes killed her husband, forced her to be his arm candy, and that she loved McQuaid. Meanwhile, Wilkes and his remaining thug run into a building. Jackson provides McQuaid with a grenade, and McQuaid throws it into the building, killing Wilkes and the other man. Falcone then arrives in his helicopter. McQuaid, Sally, Ramos, and Jackson take it, leaving Falcone to deal with the Mexican Federales. The film closes with McQuaid's ex-wife and daughter at a ceremony where McQuaid's commander presents him, as well as Ramos and Jackson, with the Texas Award of Valor, and McQuaid congratulates his ex-wife for getting an excellent job in New Mexico. The following day, McQuaid has rented a U-Haul and is helping Sally and his ex-wife move. As they are getting ready to leave, Ramos shows up telling McQuaid he's needed as a gunman has held up a federal bank. Figuring he has had enough adventure and wanting to spend more time with his family, McQuaid politely declines. However, when Ramos warns that the robber has taken hostages, McQuaid is spurred into action and the squad car speeds off. And his ex-wife bellows, JJ McQuaid, you'll never change. Now, prior to this movie, Chuck Norris had always been a lot more clean cut and wholesome as far as his image. Uh, the director, Carver, wanted to mess up Chuck Norris's image, having him grow a beard and drink beer on screen. Now, Norris was reluctant as he wanted to be a good role model for children. However, it looked like this altering of his image proved to turn out much better than anyone had anticipated. Fun facts, Chuck Norris and David Carradine refused to use stunt doubles for their climactic fight. So yes, that's all them. Now keep in mind, this movie came out 
long before Chuck Norris did Walker, Texas Ranger. And although he plays a Texas Ranger in this, it is a completely different animal. The film was originally rated R, but Chuck Norris appealed the decision to the Motion Picture Association of America and succeeded in getting the film rated PG. Okay, so because this movie is a guilty pleasure for me, on a four star system, I would rate it a three and a quarter. This is a really good example of how a quote unquote B movie can turn out to be nostalgic and a classic. As I said, it doesn't have to have a lot of plot, but it's fun. It's fun. It brings back those old days where you didn't have to have a convoluted plot. It didn't even have to make sense on every single level. You just had to like it. And bottom line is, I really like this movie. All right, as I mentioned, um, if you're a Chuck Norris fan, you already know. If you're uh, a little younger and may not have heard of this movie, like I said, you can stream it. You can uh, see if you can buy it. It's available on Amazon. Check it out, though. It is a good, fun movie. Definitely let me know in the comments if you've seen this movie and let me know what you thought about it. And let me know what you want to see or hear in the future on a future episode. All right, that's all the time I have for today, but please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. That way you don't miss any other episodes. Check out some of the previous episodes. Got plenty of them for you. Let me know what you think about those in the comments. And as always, stay positive, stay blessed. I'll talk to you again soon.